short but exposing more in your abstractions. Of course, how many libraries you have always compromise your portability. It's much easier to port something that has no libraries. So that, but again, it's a choice you, 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 you have to make. Sometimes you prefer a lot of libraries and okay, I only, I won't only run on Linux or Linux and Windows. And sometimes, okay, I will not provide any library, but I can run inside an oven or inside a, a, a microwave oven or inside a whatever, inside a panel, inside anything. And there are also some, for instance, this is uh, flexibility versus good error messages. How, how flexible is your language? So in Haskell, I don't know, many people here have experience with Haskell. Haskell is marvelous. You write things like, it looks like, almost like mathematics sometimes. But if anything goes wrong, you don't have enough redundancy to, to know what is wrong. So the error messages are kind of this stuff does not match with that other stuff. It doesn't know what of the two parts are wrong, so sometimes it's really hard to understand what's going on. And of course, simplicity, it's always something that you have to keep in mind. It's great when you need a specific thing, and oh, the language has exactly what I need, but after hundreds and hundreds of those specific things that someone needs, it becomes bloated and becomes extremely complex and the things that you think you know I don't I only have to know what I use of course if you get some others code you have to know what you don't use but what other people use and if there are errors sometimes the error involves something that you did by mistake and you are using something without knowing you are using that so of of course Complexity is not that you can just choose, oh, I'm not using that, so for me the language is not complex, that's not true at all. So as I said, we need explicit goals to solve trade-offs, we need values, we need to, to know what is important for us, what we value most when we have to decide what to do about some trade-offs. And I think one of the most important characteristics of Lua, what set Lua apart from all, most of the languages, is this set of goals, which, is, which are portability, simplicity, small size, and scripting. I talk very little about this stuff, of course. Portability, it means that it runs in in the case of Lua, it runs in almost any platform we heard of. And, uh, I mean, it, it runs in, in, in main IBM mainframes, it, it runs all kind of game consoles, it, it runs inside embedded systems, it runs in all kinds of operating systems. It, it even runs inside operating systems. There is, for instance, now the, the FreeBSD. The official distribution of FreeBSD comes with Lua inside the kernel, so you can script the kernel with Lua using when you use FreeBSD. Isn't that? Oh, I almost changed it. Oh, in the slides. Oh, thank okay. you. Full fix for BSD. Full fix for BSD. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's a student of mine. <laughs> and one of the main points about portability in Lua is that uh, we achieve portability not with a lot of if defs in the code. It's not something that, oh, we want to port to a new machine, or we put another option in the configuration file to change everything. But what we do is that we try to stand, to, to stick with the ANSI C, with the standard of, of C. And, and, we, and the, the kernel of Lua is, is written as a, what we call a freestanding application that exactly. it doesn't use stuff from operating systems. It doesn't use even our memory allocation you can configure when you create 
a real estate, you provide a function, you provide a function for memory allocation, so all file operations are outside the kernel, the kernel just again you provide functions to read and write stuff. And so it's really the portability in Lua is really very cheap, it's very easy to, to port Lua to new platforms. We have a lot of this, of stories of people, oh I'm going to port Lua to Stasar, oh I have a project, I'm going to port Lua to and then two days later, oh my project is finished for okay. <laughs> there is nothing else to be done. And well, Google is a very simple language. So it's very small in terms of concepts, in terms of, of, of constructions. This is the reference manual. This is for version 5.1, but 5.3 is more or less the same size. The manual. This is the spine of, of the manual. So this is how much you have to read. To, to instead of those huge Bibles, this is this is the whole. I mean, this documents the language, documents the libraries, documents the C API. So the, everything that officially you need to know to use Lua is written in this small book. Lua is very small. This is the size of the language of different versions of the language. Here is line of codes. There is line of lines of uh, logical lines, uh, number of semicolons. So even today it has less than 10,000 statements or in, in the, the source code, less than 25,000 lines of code. So it's still a very, very small project when compared to other languages in the same, in the same category. And maybe the most important point of Lua is that idea of being a scripting language. And here I want to emphasize that the Lua, when we talk about scripting, we really mean scripting in the old sense of the word, in the old meaning of the word, of the word that means something that used to script other applications or to script other stuff to script other libraries or to script code written in different languages. So what has a, a very strong emphasis on interlanguage communication. The, 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 the whole idea of Lua is that, that you write your program using Lua and some other language, typically C, C++, but can be many, many other languages. There are uh, reports of people using Lua, I mean, Perl, Python, Ruby, all those languages, they have libraries to incorporate Ruby, so you can script them using Lua. So Ruby is really always have a, uh, had a very strong emphasis on this stuff of real scripting that, that we call it. We have another slide of that. Yes. So one of the main points is that Lua is implemented as a library. Lua is not a program. The, 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 the program, the, the, the Lua standalone application, is just one application of, the, of this library. It doesn't have any kind of special privilege to use the library. It uses the standard API of the library. It's, as I said, it's been decided for scripting. I talk. The main part of this talk will be about the design of Lua. You see how it may not look like, but how this thing about being scripted is important in the design of the language. A lot of people think, oh, the scripting is just you have the language, then you build an API for it, and everything is solved. And you see that the whole language, since the beginning, was designed to be scripted. And oh, here is what I was talking about. Embedded in several languages. And another very important point is this distinction between embedding and extending. And usually, embedding means you have a program written in C, C, and from there you call things in Lua. So you embed Lua inside a host application. And extending is kind of the reverse. You have a program written in Lua, and then you write libraries 
for it in C or C++. And several languages, Python, for instance, it explicitly says that you should not do embedding, that there is a correct way to, to, to write programs extending. This is because the way Python is built, Lua since the beginning had this idea of being the actual, I think, most uses of Lua, well, not Warbox, is changing that Lua is, Warbox is kind of promoting Lua being more user extended, but most, many uses of Lua are still embedded in the sense that you have the program written in the different language and use Lua to configure the program to provide extra functions, etc. And so this is a, an example of, of what I was talking about. It was the first important use of Lua in games. And it has exactly that. You have the, 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 you have the engine that is not a library. With, uh, although the biggest part of the program is written in Lua, the engine, which is the library, which is the, the, the written in C++, calls Lua for its for each frame to do what the, 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 each character will, will do in each frame, what will they talk, how do they behave, etc. And so this is a typical case of Lua being used embedded in an application, even though the, the application is much smaller than this embedded, but the, 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 sometimes the ball who has the main loop problem here, who has the, the main loop is the C part, the C++ part of the code, the module, the loop has been called all the time to do stuff. So, let's have a quick look of how the goals impact the uses of Lua. So, of course, what's very popular in, okay, it's quite popular in the embedded systems, because of what? Because of portability, as I said, it's very easy to run Lua. The most strange things you find, and it's very small, so it has a very small footprint, so it fits without consuming a lot of resources. And of course, it's it's embedded <coughs> in the other sense of embedding. It's very good to integrate with other applications. So we have Lua systems, Lua being used in systems built by some EMPVs from Samsung, in routers from Cisco, in routers they use Lua to, 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 to do security, to, to, to configure the kind of, what kind of packets you accept, what kind of packets you reject. And it's been used in, by Volvo, in, in panels of cars, by Olivetti and Jose in printers, in Brazil, the middleware for digital TV, uses Lua to, to build you can build games, etc. Lua can play that in the TV. Verizon has been using Lua in its, its set-top boxes. In Texas Instruments, some calculators from Texas, you can script using Lua. And there are several other big companies using Lua for embedding. Of course, Lua is very useful for scripting applications, so we have Here's just some small examples of big programs. Again, here the main point of Lua is that it's easy to be embedded because all those applications are not written in Lua, but they use Lua as a kind of a, to offer the, 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 the end user kind of end user programming. They offer the end user the, the possibility to script the, the specific parts of, of their application. So it's being used in Wikipedia, Snort, and Map. This is a, a, I forgot the name, it's Flame, it's a, uh, it's a malware that you script for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do not promote that kind of thing. <laughs> but from a technical point of view, I mean, it's very, it's, it's very, it's very interesting that they chose Rua because I mean, they have technical attributes that was, so, and well, in Torch also you can now script with, with Lua. That there is a, a lot of here is just a, a small set of examples. And of course, then the main niche of Lua is still games. A lot of games use Lua, and this is 
only a small set of games that are scripted. In Google, most of, game, of them follow the, that, uh, that, uh, that idea from Ring Fandango, that you have kind of engine written in, in C++. Sometimes the same engine is used for different games. You, you have a, an engine written in C++ and you write different games just changing the, the scripting just to create the whole game in Google. And now you're going to see how Google, how the goals of Google, as I said, how the, the again, I forgot because here in, in, in games, what is important is that the fact that it's easy to embed, it's a fundamental point. Portability is also very important. A lot of those games run in game consoles. There are very strange architectures sometimes. The, the, to a screen, the PlayStation 3, PlayStation versions of PlayStation, and all those different consoles. And also, of course, uh, the, the, the simplicity of the language, because most people that use Lua here are not real programmers, but are, are game designers, are people that are specialized in writing games, not writing programs. And so most programmers here <coughs> enjoy the, the, the easiness of, of the language and it be more simple for, for them to run their stuff. And so now we are going to see a little the impact on the design of the language, how different features of the language were designed in some specific way because of the goals we, we set. <clears throat> One of the most important things in Google that I, I recently realized that is a very important thing in Google is the presence of clo what we now call closures, but uh, it's uh, anonymous functions as first class values with lexical scope. And this is now becoming more common in non functional languages, but it's, it's kind of a, more or less a novelty in, in, in some languages. And we, we had closures in Lua for a, a long time. And it's been very important in several other parts of Lua. So one thing that I said is that it's becoming common, but not that common, but there is still a problem of this distinction between what I call, call closing on variables or closing on values, which means whether embedding nested functions can only access the values of outside variables or they can actually access the variables. For instance, they can update outside variables. For instance, in Java, now they do have lambdas. For a long time, they didn't have lambda, kind of lambda within their classes. But now they have real lambdas, but you can only access the value of external variables because the external variables has to be final, which means that you actually are accessing the value of the variable, not the variable itself. Python have a, has a similar problem because of, of scope. If you assign to a variable, it immediately it's local, so you cannot assign to an external variable. So for the Python and Java, two very popular languages. They have closures, but it's a restricted form of closures. And as we will see, the kind of uses that Lua does with closures really benefit a lot from closing on variables and not on values. And what we are going to see too is that in most of other non-functional languages, closure is a kind of uh, extra thing that when you want to do functional stuff, you can use, but it's not something. And as we will see, in Lua you use closures almost all the time, and people use closures sometimes even without realizing they are using closures because almost everything we do in Lua needs either need closures or at least benefit a lot from, from closures. And who is written on? At least not the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
You know what's good about closures in Lua? It's a simple and well established concept. Well, at least for people that understand how that counts. It's a, uh, it's a very powerful, but as I said, more than powerful, so what I, I, I call it empowering feature, because it, it allows other features, for instance, tables, all, all the, uh, I'll talk about tables, but all uh, people that know will always say, well, table is the main stuff of Lua, but a lot of things that we do with tables, we can only do because we have closures, and sometimes we don't pay attention to it how closures are important to allow us to do what we do with tables. And, as I said that in the part of scripting, closures are very, very important in the API. For instance, because we have this clear concept of what, what is a function, we have the API is completely ortog orthogonal about how you get the function to be called and how you call it. Because to get the functions, to get the closures, to get a value. And so you can use just the same functions you have to manipulate any other kind of values. You want to get a function from inside a table. You want to get a function from inside a module. You don't have specific stuff in the API. They are just values, regular values, like any other value. So the API, you use all the API to get the function. And then you have just two extra functions to call once you got the function, it doesn't matter where it came from, you have one specific function in the API to call the function. You have two versions because it was protected, one is unprotected, but that's a detail. But so the, the closures are really important in the, the API. The bad parts, well, of course, the, the implementation is maybe one of the most complex parts in the implementation of Lua, it's very tricky to implement closures correctly with exactly with variable scope. That's why most languages don't have variable most of them, but several languages don't have variable scoping or the value scoping. That's much easier to implement. And we still have a problem that syntax for closure for functions in, in Lua is a, a little cumbersome for small functions. We've been dreaming with a macro system solve that and because we are doing it with a macro system that never comes, we do not introduce a new syntax that would be would be no a short way yeah, I would have a short life in the, the near future we'll be coming from macro system. I'm sure that the day we decide for a syntax for functions, then we'll come with a macro system and then that syntax will become useless. But <laughs> well, for those that know Lua tables are the most important, I mean the most the most characteristic point of Lua, the, 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 the distinguished feature of Lua, tables for those that don't know, it's mainly associative arrays, but it's an associative array that you can index with any value, not only with strings. So you can index them with numbers, you can index them with integers, and then you have arrays. You can index them with other functions, with objects that are actually just tables. So it's just an associative array that associates one value with another value. It's the only data structure mechanism in Lua. Everything of data structures we do in Lua matrices, arrays, records, lists, etc. We do using tables. And uh, one of the good points is that, as I said, it implements all those data structures in a very simple way. We don't have any, the, the, the tables are really very easy to use to implement that stuff. And in Lua, more or less like closures, tables are pervasive in the, 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 in the language. A lot of things even internally in Lua use tables. All global variables are cast in tables. Modules, as we will see, are built using tables and closures. Objects and classes also use tables. That's everything in Lua almost use tables. 
what are the pros, the, the good points about tables. It's very simple semantics. As I said, the basic semantics of tables just associate a value A with a value B. It's just a, an association. It's very, very powerful. And again, it's very easy to interface with other languages. Mainly, you have a function get and a function set. That's mostly create. It's just three functions, the, the, the main API. Of course, the, the, the bad points is that, again, the, the implementation is somewhat complex to optimize the, 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 how we do the, the hash part is a little complex, but it's not that complex, but the, 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 the computation of bad, good sizes for the different parts of the, the, the table that keeps things in different parts, in different uh, structures internally, and it's so completely transparent for the user. And those algorithms are sometimes a little complex. And of course, the emulation of other structures are not as good as the real thing, because there's a lot of problems sometimes for lists, or for you have to have lists with empty holes in the list, and some, so some of the things sometimes have some problems. But so let's see, for instance, uh, another example of now how we use those things in Lua, how Lua does exception handling. In most languages, this is warning, this is not Lua, this is how most languages do exception handling. You have a try with a block, and then you have a catch for exceptions. In Lua, we provide that construction with functions. We have one function that is, is P call, it's from protected call, and any function we call, the, 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 the P call only calls, a function. you provide a function and optional arguments, and it calls that function with those arguments. And the main point of P call is that no error ever escapes. P call always returns with one, the first result is a boolean telling whether there was errors during the execution of the function or not, and the second, this is either the, if there, were, there was no errors, this is the result of the function. If there was error, an error, then this is the error message. And it, so we have this function, p call, and the second function is just error that throws an error. You, when you call error with any value, it just it stops the execution of what, whatever you were running, and you p call returns with that. And then you can check the OK to do any here inside. You can use this error object as the, the, the object that, that was thrown by, by, by the error. And here we, we, we see that it, this is a typical use of P call. It's very common to write P call with an anonymous function here. So here we see a use of closures. And as I said, it's very important that we close on variables because otherwise you could not do. Uh, I, uh, here, of course, you can do assignment to external variables, but here you would not be allowed to do that if you did not have closures on variables in Google. So that's, yeah. And as I said, a lot of people use that all the time and they don't think, oh, I'm doing functional programming, I'm, doing, I'm using lambdas or I'm using closures, and you just write that code and it works as they expect. So what is good, again, it's very, very simple semantics of those problems. Well, what happens if I return inside a catch? What happens if there is an exception inside an exception? All those kinds of problems are very easy to figure out with this model. We have no extra syntax in the language to support that. All we have is just two extra functions. And as always, as I said, scripting is very important. It's something that is very simple to interface with, with other languages. Actually, this call came from the API. We first implemented that in the API with C. It's one of, as I said, it's one of the ways that C can call a function is with this P call, protected call. And then the implementation, we just get this function from C and export it to do with the kind of reflexive stuff, you get something 
from the Lua API and exporting to the language again. So it's a very easy implementation and for instance you can have C code can call protected Lua code and Lua code can throw errors or Lua code can call protected C code and C can call the error and throw. So it's very easy the integration of who throws the error, who catches the error, whether it's in C or in Lua, the whole integration is very, very simple. The console that the device is a little verbose, of course, as I said, that it's a problem of, of the syntax to of, of writing functions. That it's not that verbose, but it is a little. And the uh, try is not cost free. Then that's a, that's a, a main selling point in C++, for instance, that when you do a try, if there is no exception, the try should be completely cost free. But Several other languages do not do that. Even JavaScript, for instance, uh, V8. If a function has a try, it just V8 gives up trying to optimize the function. So it's very, very expensive to use a try in, in, in V8. So some languages or some implementations try is cost free, some others are not. In Google, you have to create a closure, call a function, so you have a small cost. But that's not. Behind. Iterators, well, the little style doesn't, doesn't matter, but the, 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 the new style, new, has only you know, a lot, a lot of years. Yeah, anyway, yes, example, more than 10 years. <laughs> we, we just write for, for W in all words of a file to print that word. And the, the behind the iterators, what is really going on here is here we have a function that returns a function that each time we call that function, it returns a new item. So a iterator in Lua, again, it's only a function. So again, functions as first class values is a fundamental concept. To, to implement the iterators in Google. Here is a small example of a, a typical iterator. This is exactly a function that return, returns all words from a file. We open, we read the first line, set position to one, and then return. This is the, the, the iterator function itself. This is a kind of factory. And here we return the function that each time we call that function, it tries to match in the line starting at the current position, tries to match a word. If it finds the word, it returns that word. Otherwise, it reads the next line, start from the initial position, and tries, tries again. And so this is a typical implementation of uh, iterator. Again, we see how important it is that we have uh, lexicoscope in with variables because we keep the state of this iterator is kept in these two variables that, that uh, survive between different invocations of this inner function. So this is more complex, this is not for common people. We don't expect common people to use. But the most important thing is that once someone does that stuff, the user all have to do to write that. So like, is using closures and cell without knowing the results. So, so it's a very simple recipe that follows and everything works. Again, the very important point of iterators, it's very easy to interface with other languages. We don't need anything or almost anything extra in the API. But we're just calling functions, writing functions, functions being called here and there. And it's very simple. And well, the codes, the, the, the bad parts is first we cannot traverse new. We use new is a special value in Lua, and we use new whether the function returns new is a sign of that it's to end the iteration. So we cannot return, iterate over, use a new finish the, the iterate duration by definition, and it's not as simple 
as I explained it, there is a, some small, sometimes I regret that, sometimes not, there is a small optimization because for, for some very small iterators, it's a little expensive to create a new closure every time you want to iterate over something. So there is actually some state that you can, can keep inside the form itself so it, 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 it's kept in the stack. You don't need memory allocation, etc. So you can use that feature. So the, the, the mechanism is a little more complex than here. Well, modules. Moduling rule is just nothing. It's just a, a way of using tables and, and closures. A module, a table, a module is just a tape populated with functions. For instance, when you do math square root of 10, math is a regular table. This is just table access using this string as the key. And the value that is stored there is a closure, it's a function, and then you call that function. So there is absolutely nothing new here. Required because all those stuff are first class values, required is just a regular function. There is nothing special in the language about required, it's just a function that receives a string as an argument and then looks in some path looking for a file that matches that string. And if it finds it, it runs the file, the file returns that table and required returns the table. So there is zero extra mechanisms in the language to support modules. Some facilities come for, for, for free. You can, have, you can use different names for the module because they are all first class. You can call the module M inside a specific uh, other module. You can give names for specific functions inside the, the, inside the uh, block. So there, there is, uh, although hardly people use those features, but you can do that if you want. And as I said, we need very, I mean, we need no features at all from the language, and we need just a small library for that function required, uh, some basic functions to, to load modules. Again, it's very easy to interface with other languages because exactly everything we need is already in the API, the how to you get things from tables, how you call functions, etc. So, and it's uh, and the reverse, it's very easy to build modules in C. All you have to do is create functions, create a table, put those functions inside the table, and return the table. We have some some library functions in Google that do that for us, so we just give a, a list of functions and names and it creates the table with that thing. The bad parts, one thing that's strange is exactly that that's too dynamic because everything is dynamic, everything is runtime, so there is no secure way to know what modules a specific piece of code use because when it's here, here is a very, very standard use, but this name here could be a variable. The require could be inside a if or even inside a loop. So it's completely, in the general case, it is impossible to know what modules another module is importing and is using. So if people start abusing that kind of thing, it becomes impossible to do any kind of static analysis with Google. And again, it's not as some things that are nicer to write in core, that, as, that, or to, to, to have some better syntax for some common stuff. Well, objects in Lua, again, there is very few new things. It's basically we have first class functions and tables. We have something that's similar to objects because we have stuff that has a state, has an identity, and has methods. The only problem is how the method access the, the object itself. And we solve that just with a very simple syntax sugar, which is the column. When we write a column foo, the Lua translates that to a dot foo a, and it passes the cells but this as the first is a, a hidden argument to the function. 
So every time we call the function, the function gets as the first argument this, the, the, the table where it should operate. And we have the same thing when you declare a function, you can write declare a function, function A column full, it becomes, it gets this extra parameter called itself. But again, this is pure syntax sugar. There is nothing, except for the syntax, there is nothing new. You can write things this way, it works exactly, and you can write that way and call it that way, or write that way. Exactly the same meaning. And of course, it, it would be very expensive if actually each object has all its functions as fields in, in the object. So we have a delegation, which is a kind of inheritance, but it's very, it's, it's very different from regular inheritance in op, object-oriented languages because it, it's something that is only related to tables. It has nothing to do with calls or with methods. The, the, the whole idea is that this is a field access delegation. It means that when a table A delegates to a table B, it means that any field, that we try to access a field in A, and A doesn't have that field, it kind of delegates the, 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 the access to B, and if B has that field, it returns that value. So it's something that has nothing to do with calls, nothing to do with methods, it's just a relationship between tables of how you can uh, you can propagate accesses. So you can do a chain, of course, B can, the, the same way that A delegates to B, B can delegate to another table, you can do a chain of delegations moving from specific field. And this is how it works in practice. When you write a program, you have a table that is a kind of corresponds to a class where you put your methods. The object itself, instead of having the methods, it only delegates to the class. And so here, when you write a column foo, as I said, it translates to a dot foo. It tries to access foo in this table. This table doesn't have that key, so it looks in the class, and here it finds the function. So it calls the function here, but the parameter, the self, is a is this table here, and so everything works exactly as we expected them to work. If here uh, I do self dot uh, some other function, again it will look for that some other function in the original table, and it's not that, then it goes there, gets, and everything works exactly as. Yes. Of course, here to access the, the instance variables, you always have to write self dot the name of the variable. This is, a lot of people consider that good practice even in, in other languages, so it's not a... Of course, you forget, if you forget that, it will not warn you about that. But, but. And so what's good about objects? In Lua, first, it's very flexible. This is the, what I showed was just the, the, what I showed. It's just the, the, the basic way to do objects, but there is a lot of variations, a lot of things you can do differently. And it's very important because it's actually, it's, here it's easy to interface. Actually, we have two different meanings here. One is that it's very easy that from Lua to, like, to, 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 to write classes in C and instantiate them in Lua or to write, write classes in Lua and instantiate them in C and to call methods from C to Lua and from Lua to C. But also, here at the point, it's very easy to mimic at some specific object-oriented construction from the host language, for instance. So if you want to, to, to do proxies, for instance, in Lua for objects in the host language, in the language that you have your application, then it's very easy to adapt this object system of Lua to that particular case. Again, it has a very clear semantics because it's all built on top of tables and, and, and closures. And it's the, the, the only thing that we actually introduce 
in Ruhe to support or was the pollen synthesis this specific the synthetic sugar of using a pollen. Everything else is in the language without all at all. The, the bad part is that it's, uh, we have a, uh, we need a, it's to do it yourself, it's a do it yourself and uh, design it yourself. That is some part. Some people, I, I particularly love this model. This is the, the one that has my book. When I program with all, I always use this model. This is very simple, you need like 10 lines of code to get it working, but a lot of people just uh, no, we need an object line. Let's start before anything else. So it's, it's so that's why I said that it's a design it yourself. So what kind of inheritance we are going to have, what kind of protections we want private members, we want protected members, we want to module members and whatever, and then this spend like three six months building perfect object library before you even started their own project. Of course, it's better when the language you just run class and everything is done for you. And so, you know, it could be easy if people realize that they only have to write that and just, just get the book, copy that part and everything works okay, but usually people get excited. And, and so, and then, and then of course, there, there are other people that see people doing that and complain, oh, look, it's very complex, I cannot use because before I start a project, I have to spend six months writing my own, like, my own object-oriented library, so. But usually it works if you resist the temptation of writing your own object-oriented library, it works okay. So, perspective of some Things in the small, one of the, the main points in the design of Ruby is that of simplicity and how some very few powerful mechanisms, in particular tables and closures, are extremely, extremely flexible in general and how a lot of things that could add, add I forgot to mention that behind all those features, a main ingredient was simplicity too. And that we avoid as much as we can to add new stuff to the language. So exactly some features here arouse because people started complaining, oh how uh, why don't you add that to the language and we, sh we just show you. you don't need that in the language. You can do it with the language just using what what the language already provides. And in particular, table. it's interesting because both tables and closures are very old concepts, very simple in some some sense. I mean, they don't have a lot of corners or a lot of different stuff. They are very basic, but very general. That's the, I think the main idea. They don't have restrictions. You can use that them really everywhere or almost everywhere. The, the small constraint in tables that you cannot use new as a value causes a, a, a lot of problems. It shows that small works can be, have huge consequences. But most of the time they're very general, very very regular, and so it's very easy to, to compose them for different tasks. And in the length, in the large, as I said in the beginning, no language is truly general purpose. In that uh, that was something that started a long time ago, and long, 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 long time ago, we had Fortran and Cobol, and then IBM decided to create PL1, because the language to unite everything, we don't need different languages for different stuff, and since then we are being living with this idea that we have created the language and then we can use that language for everything and we solve all our problems. And time and again we see that different problems really require different languages because as I, for instance, as I said, one of the main points of a good language is what it does not allow you to do. And 
and sometimes you really need the language that does not allow you to do some stuff and then for something different you need a language that allows you to do that stuff but if it is the same language people will start abusing that and immediately it's almost impossible to say oh okay you can say this is an unsecure module and then you can use whatever you do and then in two months everybody's writing insecure modules because I cannot do proper division without an insecure module to whatever to access the specific CPU instruction or anything like that. And so there is no truly so any design in those trade-offs. Different languages prioritize prioritize different goals solving those trade-offs in different directions. And Lua, as I said, the most unique point of Lua is its specific set of rules. So that's what I had to say. Question about a specific. Uh, there's an orphan in Lewis that Verarx uh, dot triple dot. Uh, could you speak a little bit to the decision to not allow manipulation of the uh, triple dot uh, Verarx in the design of Lewis? Uh, oh, the, the bar arm? Yeah, you, you know, we cannot manipulate pop it, uh, push it, or anything like that. Uh, mm -hmm. How does that fit in this uh, picture? That's a, a, a sensible point. Sometimes, more frequent than I wanted, I regret having three dots in the language at all. <laughs> Sometimes, exactly, I think it was a bad decision. It exactly is done. Oh, we need to be efficient, and then we did something very exactly. That's a lot of because it's very implementation driven and it, it, we cannot do anything else because there is one specific way to implement it. But that kind of thing that you should always avoid, but sometimes you can't avoid it. Just find, oh, there is this smart way of implementing that then I will add, you should never add something because you found a smart way to implement that. Because exactly a smart way to implement that means that it can only be implemented that way if you want to change anything, they, oh, it doesn't fit that smart way. Sometimes I, 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 I think about going back to, you just have table, you create a table, and then you can do whatever you want with tables. Tables are first class values, it's a little more expensive, but if you... But, and this is the second problem in, in language design. Performance is more often than not comparative. So if I never introduced the three dots, people usually did, didn't complain about tables being created. That was not a, a big problem. That was actually what happened is that we, when we change it from some version to some other version, we created a, a, a portability library and some functions became var art functions. And then we were afraid that well, those functions would be more expensive than they were, so we need some more efficient way to... You know, the, the idea was just to propagate the, 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 the three dots that you that we received the three dots and pass them away. And so we can, oh, there's this very smart way to do that, and then we did. But, but then, before that, people were not complaining at all. But now, if we change, then people, but oh, come on, it's 10 times slower than I, I don't care at all. Nobody noticed it. But once you have it, some, one, some guy would do a benchmark and measure just function, empty functions called doing nothing with something that will never happen in your code, but you show calling functions in Lua version X and now calling functions in Lua version X plus 1. Is 10 times or even twice slower, 10% slower, though that's terrible, you cannot do that, it's unacceptable. So we regret that. But sometimes I regret that. <laughs> uh, so, um, Lula 5 to add above GPU 
diverging since the very beginning, since they introduced the F uh, for the FFI. Because that they introduced it not a, 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 it didn't look like any compatibility because you could run a program both in your logic, but the way you optimize the program, the way the way you write the program were completely different whether you have FFI or not. So that since so since the beginning it was created a very big incompatibility. And I think I don't see how to, to, to converge both I mean it's because there are some concessions that Logit would have to do and I never saw them willing to do any kind of concession in the direction of of being compatible with some interpreted languages. So so, so you feel that the, the major issue that is around FFI, I mean, so avoiding use of FFI is not enough. You're saying that they cannot make the changes, for example, to the uh, environment, the, the environment? I, I have no, I, I know, for instance, integers will be difficult. Be good. As I said, the, the, the one of the problems of logic that is logic, the whole project is very, very smart. It's, the, 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 my power is extremely competent. But, as I said about values, he values performance above anything else. So, if you need some, as I said, I regret the, the, the three dots. I'm sure he would never regret that kind of stuff. Anything that can, can give you performance you get it, and that's it. For instance, uh, I have, uh, the, the, uh, I recently I, I, I had a, a problem with Bluejit, that Bluejit uses 32 bits for, for addresses. And there is one machine, I forgot which one, and uh, most machines you still can put all your memory in 32 bits and everything works okay, etc. And I forgot what is the, 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 this machine that uses, uh, of course, virtual memory. And the stack, it's in a completely different address from, from the heap. And so the, the, the stack needs other 32 bits instead of the heap. And then UAG decided, OK, so user data, that is our addresses, can only point to the heap. You cannot point to the stack using user data because that would require 
So it's a, something that's really, really strange. So what our library I have at LPEG doesn't run in BlueAgit in that specific machine because it uses user data pointing to, to the spec. So as, as, as I showed here, the goals are, are, very, are very different. In Lua, we would sacrifice some performance. For instance, for that stuff, you can, you can just add one bit to say whether you are pointing to, to, to the stack or to the heap, and then you can solve that problem. But of course, that one bit, you have some cost. You have every access. You have to do an extra jump to the, 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 the test to see whether you are and there are very different priorities, and so I think it's very difficult to converge with... It's not about the language, but it's, as I said, it's about the, what the priorities you have. If you have two libraries with such different priorities, it's very difficult to converge. One, one more question. Same question I gave you in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> I, try to, I try to keep the same answer. <laughs> What? Plus equals, minus equals. Uh, uh, mm. At that time, you said you would not rule it out. But yeah, you I have. Uh, oh, well, I, I do. Same answer. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I rule out. Plus minus 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 I'd like to it's, it's not only synthetic sugar, right? I mean, it's, it, it, it. That's, that's where things get complicated. We have to decide that, we have to do decisions, whether we are going to add other meta methods or we are going to keep it. It becomes just synthetic sugar, it can be optimized. But I mean, it is already optimized. When you write A equals A plus 1, the old code to generate is actually a, a plus equal one. Yeah, but a dot b equals a dot b plus one is two is this two, two, two table b reference. Yes, and, but that that exactly that is two table. But then, as I said, it depends whether what you want. For instance, if you have meta methods, should we generate two meta methods or just one? Well, if I can put in my post. <laughs> uh, I was just curious if how these four goals for the world are influencing the future direction. Of course. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I mean, are there any specific ways in which uh, the future uh, direction is developed and the expression of the world? I mean, yes, yes, we keep those goals for uh, <coughs> the, the, the community expects those goals to exist. Also, so we are really driven by by the for instance introduction of integers was the main main change. It's mainly about this thing of being embedded, of easier to interface with C, it's easy to represent a, a very important data type in C you can keep them um, with the real value. And a lot of people have problems putting 64 bits into the world and they go back and some bits were missing. And so this is for instance what was very and also for small machines that now you can comply with, with 32 bits. And so this is all related to those goals. And then that change of environments in Google 52, what about simplicity, we made the language much simpler than it was. All, all versions are usually those goals are behind most of the decisions. I was just going to ask that are you still having plans for next version like removing features or what did you have something? Do you have some ideas? <coughs> no, not currently. I, I was the, uh, the last months I was finishing the new version of the book that was released just one month ago, two months ago. And so I was very busy with that, and so there is nothing new. I am always thinking about a macro system. 
but I don't think that, well, maybe, I don't know. But other than that, and, and maybe remove the three dots from them. <laughs> 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 but I don't think I have courage to do that. Then one good point, it's very easy to, to, to keep compatibility, you could just play the table and then when you use the three dots in an expression, you need to just expand the table. So it, is, it will be very easy to, to, to change it back and be fully compatible with it, except for performance. But I don't, uh, I'm really not thinking about anything to do with it right now. What, you, what about the standard library? Do you think that uh, maybe it could be extended a little bit at, at least? With? With no. something. <laughs> <laughs> just to be <laughs> deep. <laughs> no, no, no. library just came with 5.3 and uh, it's kind of like, uh, well. Yeah, we don't, only only days, we, don't, we don't have anything. Macros? Yeah, some, yeah, not very specific. Some, maybe something related, based on okay, stuff. Token filters, yes, but more cleaner. And of course, not uh, chain it, uh, use names with them. Once you start the name, then you, I mean, for the API to. I like this idea of having a function to, to, to get tokens and a function to, to put tokens as the way to write the, the macro itself. But, but macros, uh, it, it's, there is a, the, 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 the programming in the large aspect, it's a little tricky. For instance, when you load the module, you would not load the vector because it's only loading dynamic type, time, and so we need some kind of requiring some macro to load the other macros, but then what happens to the functions? Uh, can we have modules with functions and macros that have to pr process at some part, like compile time some part, and then part how you, how you export the uh, projects, for instance, you already have this problem that you put some, pro some program out and it needs modules from and we are now whether macros will be the same or macros are already so in pre compiled code, maybe. It's a, there's a lot of decisions in this space that is kind of a lot of work. Why Lua doesn't have continual step by step? I put public use macros. Why not Lua have continual step by step? Why not have continuous step by step? Not have what? Continuous. Oh, continuous statement. I don't like it. I don't like it. But you do like it. Go, though, and break. You like it. Go, though, and break. Yes, I like it. Go to something that I, I regret too, but not because <laughs> I, I love Go to. I love Go to. I think Go to is perfect. It's, it's exactly that kind of mechanism that have very clear semantics and very flexible. The problem is that it's much more complex to implement than I thought. And it's that something that should have ring a bell after, but it's again that something, oh, I like the two work on and then you start, it, and then, oh, it's a little more complex than I thought, and then, oh, it's a little more complex, that should be a limit, and I should say, okay, I like the two so this is because now, go to it's, a, it's, the, it's easiest, the, the, the most complex part of the parser to the, it's, it's very strange, because you have, it's the only thing that you, you, you can use names without declaring them, so you have to keep two, two tables, one of labels and other of go tos and some, uh, there are some go tos that are waiting for the labels, some labels waiting for the go tos and when you enter the block, you change some of them in one direction, when you leave the block, you change them in other directions, and the implementation is sometimes very bad. I should have done. No, we cannot change. 
No, but we, we can change that. This is very, this I like very much. I always like the guy on the way. It's uh, labeled blocks, so you can have labeled bricks. And then if every inner block of a loop has a standard name, then you have to find out the good name, then you just write break continuous and it's exactly the same as a continuous. Because you're breaking the, 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 the inner block. Just but break continuous is horrible, so it's a break. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it continuous, but meaning break the, the block. I'd like to put that and remove O2 because of the complexity. But that passed the wrong idea that I don't like the two things. I love it. You haven't mentioned the dynamicity as a goal or the design goal of the language. And dynamicity, like the combination of uh, functions of the native type and uh, garbage collecting, allows to replace code on the fly. And I think it's great, a great feature of the language. Can you comment on that? What's what's dynamicity? Dynamicity of what? Of, of code. In, in fact, the fact that you can uh, 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 define new functions yes. on the fly and that the uh, old function that you said more get garbage collected. Yes, yeah, and, yes, uh, but what's the but question? The is? question is, was it a goal of the language or was it just an unexpected consequence oh. of, the, of the design goal? more kind of consequence, but it's very near the goals, for instance. One goal was to be able to garbage collect everything. This was always a, a goal. You can erase almost everything in the world, and everything will be collected, and you can almost go back to the original state in, in the code. So, but I think most most not, but several dynamic languages have that. I don't think it's a, it, it's not, a, because if it were something special, for instance, we would be thinking about changing leaf code, a function that is being used in the world to change. There is some research in this area that we how to translate the state. I never thought about that. It's crazy. So it's more, I think it's interesting, and of course it's very, to, to reload a module is very important, a lot of people do that. But it's, I think it's kind of a natural, that's what I, it's not something you think about, but it's, you come to expect from a, a dynamic language. So. Yes, time, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, sorry. So, we will have to finish. Thank you very much. Yeah, so there is a very short coffee break, and then at 11 a.m. there is a new, the next talk on the history of war. And by the way, at 5.30 p.m., if you want to hang around, uh, we're going to have pizza and beers. So, yeah. So very short coffee break, very short coffee break right now.